Hi, this is Mr. Wartsky, and today we're going to talk about how to move things from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. So to help you remember, if you need to, you can watch this video over again, hit pause, take some notes, or just rehearse the material. So I know there are times when you want to remember something, someone's name, a phone number, when you're taking a test, you want to remember the answers, but somehow you forgot. So how can I help you remember? Well, keep on watching. So it all starts with the brain. We know the parts and portions of the brain that are associated with memory. Now the limbic system is responsible for emotions and memory. In the limbic system, there is the amygdala, which is a topic for another conversation, and the hippocampus. The hippocampus is what we want to focus our attention on. And the hippocampus is this purple thing right here. Okay, this we have to remember for memory. So, I guess we're talking about memory. Now, as you're sitting there, your senses are constantly, constantly being bombarded with all the information around you. You're taking in stuff with all of your senses. And because of this, we can only pay attention to one cognitively demanding task at a time. And that's what we call focus. When we have something that we want to remember, we first have to put that piece of information into our short-term memory. In order to move the material from the sensory memory, that's when you're being bombarded with all sorts of stuff, to the short-term memory, you need to make that piece of information memorable, meaningful, or you have to encode the information. If the information isn't encoded, it will stay in your short-term memory for about 20 to 30 seconds. So you need to move that piece of information into the immediate memory, which is a type of short-term memory. How do you do that? Well, like for a phone number or a name, you're constantly repeating it, like 8675309. 8675309. 8675309. That would be a good lyric for a song. So the second type of short-term memory is working memory, which is a perfect name for it. Why? Because you have to work on the information to make it into working memory. The more you work on it, the more likely you are to transfer that information from the working memory, which is your short-term memory, to the long-term memory, which is the holy grail of memory. If you study by reading over your notes just a few times before the exam, that is not enough to move it into long-term memory. So how can you prepare to transfer the information from your short-term memory to the long-term memory. Well, you, this is how you prepare yourself. First, you clear the decks, decrease the stimuli. Remember, we can only focus on one thing at a time, and if you continually bombard yourself with uh, a stimulus, then that makes it tougher. Exercise. Believe it or not, all organs can benefit from exercise, and the brain is no different. Research shows that fit mice form more neural connections and sedentary ones. And sleep. Your brain organizes and evaluates your memories when you sleep. So get enough sleep. So here are some strategies that might help you transfer the information from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. So first is spaced practice. This is the opposite of cramming. So you space your studying over a long period of time. Study a little every day. Set up a daily schedule that includes studying or study time. This will help you organize your long-term memory. Along with that, you can break tasks down. This complements space practice perfectly. You study smaller pieces of information, and this will help you focus because you are not rushing to learn everything. Overlearning. And this sounds just like the name implies. You need to keep on learning the material. This will help you relieve test anxiety, which I know some of you might have. 
because the overlearn is so embedded in your brain, in your hippocampus, that you will be able to overcome that anxiety. And repetition, you need to increase your reps. You will need to write, think, and recite over and over and over again. Rehearsal, that is practicing the material. How you read, outline, predict test questions. You can create charts, you can create concept maps, you can create your own tests. That is rehearsing. It's a different way of approaching the material. Acronyms, words that are made up of the first letter of each word that you have to remember. Like sponge, 99% of all living matter is made of sponge, sulfur, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. Or ITMAT, which is the cell cycle interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And Sakatoa, which is a math term. Acrostics, a sentence made up of words that have the first letter of what you are trying to remember. So in biology, in order to remember the levels of classification, we came up with a sentence that takes the first letter of each word we want to remember. So we remember King Philip comes over for great salad which stand for kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And associations. The associations, we take pieces of information and we associate them together. For example, there's two types of data, qualitative and quantitative. Now, quantitative data deals with numbers. Now, how do I know and how do I remember, and this is the only way that I remember that quantitative data deals with numbers is because N is in quantitative and N is the first letter of numbers. So I associate those two things together. So hopefully that will help. Again, if you need to re help yourself remember the presentation, you can watch the video over again, take some notes, outline it, do some rehearsing. This is Mr. Worski and I really hope this helps.